Hey professionals, in this video I'm going to go through a series of apprenticeships that are actually really well paid if money is your biggest motivator and you just want to start stacking from early. This video has been highly requested and I've got a lot more content on the way. This channel is all about career advice, just helping you be career savvy at whatever stage you're at in your career. I also post daily on TikTok and Instagram so check them out for digestible shorts. If you need any CV advice check out my CV advice playlist and we can actually work together on a one to one basis if you need help improving your CV. Just get in touch through my website, link in the description. Choosing to do an apprenticeship is a great way to combine education and practical experience. If you're unsure about the pros and cons of going to university or doing an apprenticeship then check out this video that I'll put on the screen and I also have a video just tailored around apprenticeships and what they are and the wages around apprenticeships so do check that video out I'll actually make a playlist on apprenticeships so yeah you'll be able to find those videos very easily and I have a few more videos on apprenticeships coming soon so be sure to yeah subscribe so you don't miss out on those as well without wasting any time let's talk about banking apprenticeships from Santander you can actually get paid up to 23,000 as an apprentice banking apprenticeships are very varied you can actually be right at the front of the store as a branch advisor or you could be behind the scenes working in cyber security or in fraud protection. Santander offers apprenticeships from those doing GCSEs all the way up to A levels. A typical apprenticeship program from Santander can actually last between 12 months all the way up to four years. This is all depending on the role that you're going for so be sure to check and read that job spec before you apply to that position. Lloyds is one of the UK's biggest banks and they offer apprenticeships from level two which is intermediate all the way up to level six which is a degree level. They recruit all year round and employ over a thousand apprenticeships every year. So be sure to keep checking on their website if you're looking for an apprenticeship within Lloyds. Barclays is the bank of the Premier League and is actually one of the top four UK biggest banks. They offer two apprenticeship schemes that you could apply to. One at foundation level, so that's between two to three or at higher level which is between four to seven again just like lawyers they hire all year round so be sure to keep checking on their website rbs aka natwest is another one of the biggest uk banks and they actually open their applications in september so be sure to set your calendar and yeah get applying around that time HSBC is the final big bank that will actually offer you support to obtain a degree. Usually foundation apprenticeships are around 18 months long and degree apprenticeships are around 48 months long. Be sure to check their website. To qualify for these degree apprenticeships, you need a minimum of 112 UCAS points across three A-levels plus five GCSEs that include maths and English. I wouldn't just go for the minimum. Honestly, try your best and just get the best grade that you can get if you're studying A-levels or if you're doing your BTEC. Just try and get the best grade that you can get because it is competitive out there getting a degree apprenticeship. Metro Bank offer flexible shifts, which is pretty cool. And they have apprenticeships starting at around 18,000. 18,000 is actually a decent starting salary. When I was in recruitment, I was actually hiring grads at around 18,000. And that's three years after them doing a degree which is pretty insane because you'll be on 18,000 just coming out of college. Nationwide also advertises apprenticeship opportunities and they've recruited around 200 apprenticeships over the past few years. So they may be a bit sparse, but keep checking their website if you're interested in joining Nationwide. Usually apprenticeship opportunities either open in September or they'll open in February with a September start date. Banking is a rapidly changing industry and the jobs are just so broad. Having experience in banking can lead you in a career such as being an investment banker, being a bank teller, being a credit analyst. Whatever job you get within the banking industry, you'll be helping clients with their financial transactions and actually advertising them on products that they could get into, such as a checking as account, savings account, or even a loan. You could even be helping companies, guiding them to their financial goals and helping them make plans so they can achieve those goals. Another apprenticeship that pays really well is the civil service. I used to work closely with the hiring team over at the civil service and I can tell you for a fact they're pushing diverse candidates to apply to their apprenticeship opportunities. Most specifically is their fast stream. The fast stream offers 15 schemes that have a really high potential and actually really good starting salaries. Specifically positions with the office for national statistics offering 22K for an apprenticeship. If you're thinking of going to university, then you need to still consider joining the civil service after you graduate. They are open to your degree background. They was rated by the times as the number one graduate employer for the third time 
running in a row. If you need help applying to graduate schemes, check out my interview advice playlist. I think that'll be a no brainer and hopefully you would have subscribed by now. I have covered finance and banking apprenticeships in this video, but I haven't covered accounting and finance apprenticeships because these actually pay quite well too. There are four main accounting firms that dominate the space and these are called the big four. The big four is KPMG, Deloitte, EY and PwC. Be sure to check out those websites if you're interested in going into finance and accounting. Ernest & Young aka EY offer a number of apprenticeships that actually have the starting salary of just under 22 grand. Accountants wear many hats. They are responsible for keeping and interpreting financial records, managing payroll and reviewing budgets and spending, working with auditors. A full career within accounting can actually lead to salaries starting from 30 grand all the way up to 100 grand depending on your level of seniority. You also need to factor in sector and location. An accounting industry role can lead you to become either an accountant, working within financial analysis, being a payroll manager or supervisor, being a business analyst, and a financial advisor. And I don't mean those that just scam on either TikTok and Instagram, like buy my course, you'll get rich quick. No, it's not one of them. To pursue a career within finance and accounting, not only do you need to be good with maths and with numbers, but you need to actually be thinking critically and actually have strong analysis skills. Along with that, you need to be an awesome communicator because you need to interpret data and actually relay that data and explain coherently what does that data mean, as well as preparing written reports. Although financial apprenticeships are in demand and they're highly competitive, they're absolutely worth your time. Once you qualify, you'll be on some good money and you won't actually be out of work because every business will need an accountant. The next apprenticeships that actually pay quite well is the logistic apprenticeships. If you want to work at the Royal Mail, they advertise their apprenticeships for around 20,000. This is decent for someone coming out of college or sixth form. Make sure that you're checking throughout the year when are these apprenticeships open because they will be competitive. All apprenticeships, not gonna lie, are competitive. So you need to be acting on them fast. If you see an apprenticeship that you wanna to apply to, don't faff about, just start making your application and submit that application when you can. Right, the last section of this video is all about IT apprenticeships. As a tech recruiter, I can tell you for a fact that jobs within IT as a graduate pay well over 40,000. I don't specialize in graduate IT roles. I only hire for like mid level all the way up to C-suite. Um, roles within my current job but I can tell you for graduates they pay over 40,000 so if you're thinking of going to university to do a degree in either computer science or something in IT related why don't you just do a apprenticeship instead because you'll be combining as I mentioned in the beginning of the video your practical experience with education because you potentially could get a degree out of it and you'll be getting paid to do so so with the IT apprenticeships, I've broken it down into six different jobs that you can get into. So the first one would be software engineering apprenticeships. These can range between 18 to 24,000, depending on the role, location, and the company itself. There are many types of IT apprenticeships, and I don't think I've actually covered them all, but I'm gonna give you six so you get a good idea of what IT apprenticeships may be a right fit for you. Before I do, I really appreciate it if you can drop a like on this video if you found any of this useful and drop a comment to see what apprenticeships are you actually interested in doing or if you're not thinking of doing an apprenticeship, why are you not thinking of doing an apprenticeship? Let me know, I'll respond back to your comment. Also, side note, did you know that IT roles have been consistently searched on LinkedIn's list to being the most popular job going right now with software engineer right at the top? Software engineering and development work consists of you actually building robust computer and software applications. You don't even have to do an apprenticeship to be a software engineer. You can actually do this by just learning courses online. Google have even said that you don't need a degree to get into tech and I believe that you don't need a degree to get into tech. It's all about doing the courses and in conjunction of you doing these courses, make sure you're actually working on a project and you're building something and you're not just learning all the theory, you're actually utilizing that theory and working on a side project and actually build something, build an app. To get into back-end software engineering, you need to pick a suitable language. So that can be Python, Java, C Sharp, C++ if you're interested in gaming. Otherwise, if you're interested in front-end engineering, then I'd recommend learning JavaScript and TypeScript and then picking a popular framework. So that could be either React, Angular, or even Vue. These languages are effectively instructions for computers. That's software development. Let's talk about cyber. Since the pandemic, cybercrime has increased dramatically. The dramatic increase in cybercrime has made that cyber security roles 
have increased too. Jobs within cybersecurity can be cyber analysts, ethical hackers, penetration testers. Your responsibility working in these roles is to actually identify threats within either your client's computer system or the company that you're working at computer system, just making it more secure and safe. Cybersecurity offers amazing career potential and can land you on some really good money. And the type of companies that you can actually apply to is like Coca-Cola, BT, BBC. There's so many cybersecurity roles out there. You just gotta take the time to actually do your research on this. I did mention all those banks earlier. They will definitely need cybersecurity analysts working for them, just keeping all their financial information safe and secure. Another IT apprenticeship that you could be working at is a network engineer. This is where you'll be working on the design and the daily operations of your client's network. So this can include working with like the broadband networks, the firewalls, making sure everything is up and running and nothing goes down. This is a brilliant career path if you're actually very business minded because you can actually start your own consultancy in the future. The next apprenticeship within IT is of course IT support. Every company or even school will have an IT department. They will need the IT department to make sure that the day-to-day -day operations of that business is running perfectly. So what you'll be doing is fixing problems, diagnosing faults, maybe doing root cause analysis, just essentially maintaining all the computers and network system. It's the job of an IT support apprentice to ensure that the computer systems are all up and running and they're secure and maybe even provide business decisions on what technology should the school or the company use in the future. Another career within IT is actually being a data analyst. This will suit you if you absolutely love maths and you want to combine maths with technology and software. Data is an invaluable asset to all businesses. Data helps give an understanding of the market, sales, trends. Being able to sift through unstructured data is a very important skill. Data and IT roles often cross over and you need to be sure that you're comfortable working with databases and making sure that you can identify information quickly, store information, clean the information, and most importantly, analyze data sets. Working within data, you can actually progress into a data analyst position, a data scientist position, and a data engineer position. I'll give you a brief overview of a data engineer because I hire senior data engineers on a rolling basis. Data engineers get paid a lot of money because their prime responsibilities is to understand how a database works and how to properly design pipelines and actually load data into these databases. The key skills that you need to know to be an awesome data engineer, knowing either Python or SQL as a programming language, understanding the difference between relational and non-relational databases and actually having that hands-on experience working with both of them. Extract, test and load, aka ETL, technologies and tools such as Airflow or Hadoop, and knowledge of a specific cloud infrastructure. Each company would either be on-prem or actually have a certain cloud provider. That could be AWS, Azure, or even GCP. So maybe specializing in one of those. This is just a high level overview of what you need to be a successful data engineer. So yeah, take that with a pinch of salt because there is a lot more to it as well. Finally, the last IT apprenticeship is actually a DevOps engineer. If you've never heard of DevOps, it just stands for development and operations. If you're considering a career within DevOps, then you need to pick a main cloud provider. So that could be GCP, which is from Google, Azure, which is Microsoft, and AWS, which is a no-brainer, Amazon Web Services. DevOps engineers will be automating and integrating technology between software development and IT teams. Basically, it links the people who write the code and help them actually deploy the code into the cloud. You will be involved in scaling and building that cloud provider's infrastructure, so that could be AWS, GCP, or Azure infrastructure, as well as building a continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines and much more. And there is even a subsidiary role for DevOps, which is a site reliability engineer. I'm not gonna go into what is a site reliability engineer. Google wrote the handbook. Just do some research on what is an SRE engineer. So those are the highest paid apprenticeships that I think you should be considering if you're thinking of doing an apprenticeship and money is your main motivator. There are other apprenticeships that I haven't covered, which I may do a part two. I know I haven't covered engineering apprenticeships and I've got a whole video dedicated on all the different types of engineering apprenticeships because there's so many. So be sure to like this video and yeah, subscribe so you don't miss out on that video that I'm gonna post very soon. As mentioned, I've got two other apprenticeship videos that I've already made. So the pros and cons of choosing an apprenticeship versus university and actually my thought process of actually going to university 
and what is an apprenticeship so if you don't know what an apprenticeship is do check those videos out as well after this video don't forget check out my tiktok and instagram i post digestible short tips if you just want to level up and have your daily career advice definitely do check those platforms out i am sometimes on tiktok live i wouldn't say daily but i am on there so if you want to ask me a question on a one-to-one -one basis then jump in the live ask me that question i'll be sure to respond if you need help writing a professional cv then head over to my website we can work on a one-to-one -one basis i can even help you get that apprenticeship i've helped out a few clients get their apprenticeship on instagram you can check out my highlights i've got a reviews tab and you can check out all the people that have helped in the past i am getting pretty busy so if you are going to inquire please just yeah be patient i will get back to you eventually of course subscribe for weekly videos helping you be career savvy at whatever stage you're at in your career good luck figuring out what apprenticeship you want to do peace i know you'll make the right decision